We call it a veil or like a micro gilly and it essentially uh, breaks up the triangles of your shoulder line of your head that, um, that the human eye tends to pick up. My name's uh, Bombardier Sam, I'm with the New Zealand Army with 16 Field Regiment as a Joint Terminal Attack Controller and this is what I'd take on a 72 hour patrol. What we get here is the the modular assault, uh, assault rifle uh, light, it's just a 5.56 um, assault rifle. We've got um, an ACOG and then a red dot on the top. Um, we've got a PET-15 which is our, our laser and then we've also got pop-up iron sights. What do you have sort of wrapped around it there? What's all that green stuff? Uh, it's just it's just a wrap to sort of break up the shape of the rifle. Um, essentially if you're operating in close quarters or in um, close proximity um, if you just had a standard black rifle, it would it would catch the eye, and you're more likely to get detected. Essentially, um, here we've got the uh, helmet. It's got the MVG mount. Uh, it's got a red light, uh, IR strobe, and then a counterweight for the uh, night vision. You could wear it all day long. It's not too bad. You uh, might get a sore neck after a wee while, but here we've got the battle belt. I've got a football gameplay kind of thing and I can just quick reference it it's just got pertinent information and then the well here I've got like a like a CAS brief so close air support brief and I'll just have that if I needed to reference it or sort of fill it out on the run I don't always have the time to pull out a notebook and I can just quickly scribble something down on it standard K bar K bar knife a GPS just chuck it on your on your wrist just for a quick reference individual first aid kit so this is just as for me only, and then I can, whoever, if I get injured, they can just quickly pull it off and get to whatever uh, material needs. So I've got a extra um, tourniquet, I've got Israeli bandage, and then we've got uh, chest seals, so if you get shot in the chest or something like that. Obviously, like, you're not a medic, but, like, you have a lot of first aid training, right? Uh, yeah, we have, like, upgrade upgrade medical courses, so like a combat um, combat lifesavers course, so you just get a little bit extra training. Sure, like just basic combat medical care? Yeah, it's just, just a bit more than what you would get taught just out of basic training pretty much, yeah. Here, just got uh, night vision. So just try and keep that on you the whole time. Um, ideally not in your bag, so if you forget it or leave it, then you can't operate at night, so. Now, does that attach to your helmet? Uh, yep. So just, it just attaches like that, and then just folds down. Um, and here, another extra water bottle, trying to keep at least a litre on you. So just more water. A um, bit of rope, and then a pruning saw for cutting brush and that kind of thing and that's just tethered to me so I don't lose it. Well predominantly we operate in the southwest Pacific kind of area so a lot of our operations or previous operations are all conducted a lot of the time in the jungle or the bush. Just an extra uh, magazine and then a grenade pouch. Just five, five mags on us and then the extra mags will be in an extra bag so like the grab bag or something like that. Standard issue uh, body armour. On the front here we've got uh, extra magazines, um, we've got our ATAC or essentially we can do all our mapping and all our connectivity off this. Um, we can send uh, data missions through radios and that kind of thing like that. We've got our push to talk, so talking on the radio. So we can operate up to four different um, channels on this, so talk, talking to lots of different people. Um, we've got a uh, dump pouch to the uh, my right hand side we've just got uh, different books we can reference so this is a like a J fire a joint fires so this um, gives us all the information that we might need on the run or we can reference it if we need to conduct a, some kind of mission with naval or air or ground just a extra notebook for cares briefs and that kind of thing it's um, it's just laminated and then we go over it with sandpaper just so we can write on it in the rain with pencil. Just a, just a back panel for extra stuff, uh, whatever you might need, and then uh, radio. No comms, no bombs.
<laughs> yeah, calm, calms are critical. You can't can't do anything out. Yeah, but isn't isn't it tough in some jungle environments? Uh, yeah, for sure. But we have techniques and tactics and stuff to mitigate that kind of stuff. Um, on the left hand side here, we've just got a IR pointer. If I wanted to talk to like a UAV or a, a fighter or something that's coming to strike a target, I could essentially rope them around like this and then lasso them onto uh, whatever he's striking. Compass, it's got a uh, tritium in it so you can see through night. You don't actually have to charge it with um, like an extra light to be able to illuminate the illuminators. So this is a special reconnaissance pack. It's essentially a 72 hour loadout. Essentially how the pack's configured is we like to have all our equipment on the exterior of the pack so we're not constantly opening the pack and digging into the middle of it. On the top of the pack here is our claymore pouch. Um, obviously we'd put our claymore in there. Um, in, con in conjunction to that we'd have a, we call it a veil or like a micro ghillie and it essentially uh, breaks up the triangles of your shoulder line, your head that, that the human eye tends to pick up. Uh, this would be uh, utilised when you're in the observation post or conducting a close, re close uh, target reconnaissance. To the right here, um, we have a, uh, we call it a, a hutchie. What's a hutchie? A hutchie is essentially uh, a TP uh, tarp that we utilise in the field to keep the rain off our heads. On the pack itself, we like to keep um, all our water located on it, so we're not drinking the water from our, our webbing. Um, just if we have to go on the run or some sort, um, we're not drinking all the water that's already on us. On the side here, we just got wet weather jacket. It's wet weather jacket. And wet weather pants. We try avoid wearing them as much as possible because um, the rustling and the noise uh, can give away your position. In this pouch here, we've got a jet boil, gas. What's that for? Uh, just heating up your food, pretty much. Uh, hot brews, coffees those kind of things. Uh, basically a morale tool, keep the morale up. Turns on. There's not too many good things in the field, so anything that can sort of cheer you up. In the front here we have our MREs. What, what we uh, like to do is we'll break them up into three packs, essentially. We'll have uh, one that's just full of the meat packs, uh, one's just full of like your scroggin, your uh, skittles and that kind of thing and then we also have a rubbish bag um, just keep everything clean and try and reduce our sign. What is scrog? Scroggin is essentially we basically grab all the the nuts and berries and all that kind of stuff and we'll take them out of their packaging and we'll chuck them into one bag just to reduce all the um, the rubbish and that kind of thing. Um, it's just easier instead of having to break into a new pack every uh, time. Yeah, why is it important to, to be accountable for your own trash uh, in the field, your own rubbish in the field? Uh, essentially, it gives away sign and it can give the trackers or enemy sort of a bit of an um, intelligence picture to, to sort of who's operating in that area. Got our thermal mat here and then when we're operating we can just sit behind our pack light. So and then we have access to everything that's on our pack. So it's just like a seat cushion? It's a seat cushion and it keeps your, keeps your butt warm. It's just been cut and uh, taped back together just so it folds nicely. At the top of the, top of the pack we have a, um, essentially a, a grab bag. The grab bag is essentially contained of all like mission uh, critical equipment, so your radios, um, any comsec uh, material, um, optics um, that you don't want to get into the enemy's hands um, and essentially we have it in the grab bag is just so if we have to go on the run we're not carrying a massive pack and it's it's there good to go you can see that the the straps are on the outside just so we can grab it and pull it out before we've got our, our mission essential uh, essential uh, material so we've got our, our thermal um, night optic and our day optic, so it's a, it's called a uh, Jim LR. It's a, a thermal, a thermal optic, and it also has a day TV mode. Um, and we can look out super far um, with these, essentially a lot further than your, your sort of normal, um, your optics. So I'm built into it. There's also a uh, IR pointer. Essentially, um, it's a laser that's invisible to the naked eye, and it can only be seen at night with uh, night vision 
uh, goggles. So if you're if you're marking targets or something, if you've got guys that are or an aircraft in the overhead, you can actually um, laser the target or IR point the target, and then he can get quickly correlated um, onto it. And then some uh, warm gears to stay off if it get cold at night. That looks pretty comfortable. Yeah, it's good to go. Uh, thermals, jocks, uh, socks, you probably don't want to look at those. <laughs> Just pretty standard stuff. What are jocks? Uh, jocks, uh, underwear. I think he's calling them underwear. Yeah. And then um, we have our sleeping bag. So here we've got um, essentially our sleeping bag set up. It's a, a waterproof uh, liner that stops the, the bag getting wet. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the time we'll just operate with just this and we, um, depending on the, the tax scenario, we won't actually deploy the, the hutchie itself. Um, and then again, we like to order it and how we're going to use it. So when we're jumping into our bag, when we're soaking wet, um, we try and avoid that. So we'll have uh, dry, dry equipment so we can jump in. So take your wet pants off, chuck some dry pants on. And that's just a uh, standard issue uh, jungle bag. And that's everything I'll take on a 72 hour mission. So is it a ruck? Yeah, ruck, a pack, ruck. We, we like to call it a, a pack, so yeah. So, so it's different. You, you don't ever refer to it as a ruck. If we referred to it as a ruck, everyone would know what it is.